Hello and welcome back to this lecture in this lecture series on Windows Server 2016 with me, Joachim Shevrestor from the University of Skövde. Uh, as you may hear, I have a little bit of a cold today, so I may sound a little bit weird, more weird than usual, but I just guess that we have to do with that. Uh, the topic for this video lecture is that we will look a little bit into how we can arrange users in our Active Directory and have a very brief introduction on how you can add users to Active Directory using a PowerShell script. Uh, so when we talk about organizing users in our Active Directory, it's important to know that uh, in a real world environment, we may have anywhere between 10 and 10 thousands or even 10 millions of users in our Active Directory, depending on the size of the organization where we work. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of different ways and approaches to how we would arrange our users. Um, and actually, I would say there is no real best, best practice. What, what goes is that you will have to motivate your design choice uh, based on the needs of your organization and perhaps your personal flavor. And you should have to be uh, you should have a knowledge about the technical background that influences how you may want to um, structure your AD and then you should base your design choices on that. And so let's look at it a little bit. As we described last time, uh, the Active Directory is basically structured with a bunch of organizational units. Uh, and when we c come to talk about group policy objects that we will do in a later lecture, you should know that group policy objects is permissions or settings that you set for your users. So for instance, you can have a bunch of users uh, that is not allowed to say to change the desktop, that are not allowed to delete icons. Uh, some users should have some uh, network folders mapped and so on and so forth. And you may want to have different settings for different set of users. What you should notice is that if you look at the organizational unit that is called uh, my user, it is a folder that has, uh, I don't know what it is, but it has something on it, whereas the default uh, folders in here does not have that thing on it. And this has a significance be because the organizational units that are actually true organizational units are those that has this little thingy on it. And the significance of this is that when you create those group policies, those settings, you can link those to different organizational units and they will only be applied to users within that organizational unit or a organizational unit below it. So for instance, if I were to link a group policy object to the top domain here, the O9 Joaquata local, it would apply to all users and all computers and all objects within the entire structure. But if I were to link it to the organizational unit, my users, uh, it would only apply to the users in there. So this might have an implication of how you want to structure your Active Directory. Uh, and of course, there are maybe two extremes where one is just having an organizational unit called my users, as in this case. Um, and separating all the settings by groups in some way. We will talk a little bit about that uh, at the end of this lecture. Um, or the other way around where you would have um, an organizational unit for each and every department. So maybe he, instead of having my users, you would have research and development, finance, sales, IT, I don't know, something, something else. Uh, the thing is that in a modern company, it's very common for a user to work in different organization or different parts of the organization. So you may have a user that is part-time R&D and part-time, I don't know, IT. And how, where would you place that user? So that becomes a problem. Um, enough said about that. Uh, what I want you to, uh, what, what I want you to bring with you here is that based on the knowledge that you can get in this lecture series or a course in Windows administration, there are implications that would influence how you choose to structure your users. When it comes to share permissions or share permissions, I'm going to show you a way in the end of this slide, when we have in the end of this lecture, when we have some users in an organization uh, in our AD structure that is called nested groups, where you put, create two sets of groups. You create role groups that will describe the roles of the user, and then you create rule groups that will be used to create rules like permissions and such. Uh, and that is an, an alternative to uh, to separating the users based on uh, based on different organizational units. Uh, an upset about that, we know we know from last time that the simple way to create a user is just to right click in an organizational unit, take new, 
and then user and then starting putting stuff but that is going to require a lot of work if you have to add multiple users at once so perhaps a more common way is that you use some sort of script to do it uh, and i think that uh, or my idea here is that we will look very briefly on how to just very simply add a user to active directory and um, of course you may want to do more things like put it in the correct groups give it a home folder and stuff like that we're not going to do that today uh, this is just sort of to get you a little bit started uh, in this youtube channel in the unnumbered videos there are uh, three videos that would introduce you to powershell if you want to know more i really really think that if you want to work as a system administrator you should get used to scripting so a good starting point would be to look at those videos and and perhaps take a course on script programming because automation is really what uh, system administration is all about um, but that's it for now let's head into powershell so the way you would start powershell is by clicking the magnifying glass and start typing as always uh, and you will notice that we have windows powershell which is basically a command line tool and we also have powershell isc the integrated integrated scripting environment which i'm gonna open and what it is is basically an area where you can write your script as i've started here and an area where you will see the output of the script so i'm just going to clear my window here which i can do with a clear console pane button up here that looks like a windshield scraper uh, and we can start from scratch so uh, powershell is a scripting language where you can do all sorts of things that you would normally do in a scripting language like you work with variables hashes arrays loops if if statements and so on and so forth uh, but it's heavily built around modules so what we have when we work with active directory is an active directory module that can do all sorts of things like adding users adding groups looking at users looking at group information uh, and so on and so forth but when we want to add user what we're mostly concerned about is the new ad user and uh, so if we use new ad user we basically create a new user nothing weird about that uh, but to automate stuff we also need the user to have some uh, to have some attributes right so for instance we needed to have a sam account name which is the login name and we also needed to have a name so let's just real quickly create a user that we call new test and we give it a name test user uh, if i mark this part of code and click the click f8 or the run selection button up here i will just run this part of the script and we'll see what happens so the output says basically nothing, but if I go look into Active Directory and in the default organizational unit, I will see that when I update up here, I will have the test user down here. So this is basically adding a very simple user to Active Directory. Uh, there are some things we have to notice about it. For instance, it is disabled, which you can see uh, if you look really close, you can see that there is a ring with a red down downwards pointing arrow in it. That means that it cannot log in because it's disabled and that's not very good. Uh, I also want to show you uh, another thing. So if we click the user and we go clicking about, we can see if we look in uh, under account, we can see our logon name here. Uh, and yeah, and we can see all the different attributes. So if we want to we can set values in all of those different tabs here we're not going to do that but we're going to do some of them uh, so for now let's just take away that user because it's not useful being disabled and all and it's placed in the default organizational unit rather than the my users organizational unit where i want it and uh, something that you should notice here is that uh, usernames has to be unique so if i try to run the same command again i will get um, I will get some some errors specifying that the specified account already exists. Uh, so we'll go about and remove it, and then we'll go back to the script. And in this case, we're going to use the same command again, but we're also going to add a principal name, basically an uh, an email address. So we do that by uh, selecting a new attribute. We can do that with just uh, going with a dash and then i get a listing of all the different uh, attributes that i can use the one that i'm interested in right now is called user principal name so if i start typing user principal name it comes up and i can just tab complete so the user principal name we should choose something maybe test at 
test.com and we can run this again. So we will have our user added. It's still going to be in the user's organizational unit. And if I click it and go to account, the difference here is that I will now also have a user logon name. So in essence, you can use any of those, I guess. Um, clicking that away, because uh, we are still not happy. To be happy, we need the account to be enabled and we need it to be in the My Users organization. Uh, organizational unit so let's remove it and make sure that it ends up in my users instead so back to powershell i'm going to add some more here and to specify where it is located what you need to do then is type uh, type in the attribute that is called path so i'm selecting path and in this case what i want is to specify the organizational unit and the domain so i will do this uh, back to front so if we look at Active Directory, what I have to start with specifying is the organizational unit and then the domain. So if there would have been another organizational unit here, and I want to place my user in here, I would first have to specify this organizational unit and this organizational unit, and then end with the domain. So we're going back to front. So how would we go about doing this? Well. We have path and then we first type in OU for organizational unit equals and then my users. And then we have a comma and then we can specify the domain and the domain is parted in two steps, right? do 9 yoacadlocal and we have to sp uh, specify those individually. And we specify those using the keyword DC which stands for domain controller. So domain controller uh, do 9 yoaca comma uh, DC equals local and then that's it. So now the user should be in the correct spot. So let's mark all of this again and we hit go. No errors and now we go into my users and we refresh and now you can see that the test user is here. So the last thing we have to do is give this user a password because you can see that the little uh, the little red arrow is still there, so we need to give it a password and make sure that it's enabled. So we'll remove it again, and we go back into PowerShell, and what we need to do now is to first use the way of setting password, and this is quite a long string, so I have, cop uh, I have saved it down here. What we need to do is use the attribute account password, so uh, dash account password, I'm going to do it the sheeting way, just hit control V, and show you instead. So what we have is account password, but then instead of just inputting what we want, we go with a parenthesis convert to secure string. And this is because the password that we supply here must be in the format that Microsoft considers a secure string, which is, uh, I guess, a hashed or encrypted format. I don't really know. Uh, so we have to use convert to secure string, and then we pass our password, which is uh, SYP 9494 here, and we have to specify that we're passing something that is in plain text and also forth. Let's just see what happens if I just mark this secure string portion here and just run that. Uh, okay, nothing really. Uh, well, uh, this is the way that you specify an account password. Uh, of course, in a real world environment, you maybe have some other way of doing it or uh, you would have some randomizing function, so you would get a random password for each user and have them change it on their first login, but we're not going to do that here. Uh, last but not least, you have to set the enabled uh, attribute to true, and you do that by, again, taking dash, enabled, and then use the dollar $true variable. So this is the entire line for adding a complete and working user. So now let's just mark all of it. And we hit run selection again, which you can do with F8. Nothing is wrong. Now let's go into the My Users Organizational Unit. And you can see that now we have a user that is uh, active and ready to be used. Uh, so that's that. But as I said, maybe you want to add, automate the, the adding of a whole number of users rather than just adding a single user. So one way to do that is have all the users laying around in a comma separated file that you can import into 
uh, PowerShell. So I'm going to show you such file. I have one here, a very limited one that is called users.csv. So if I open that, you can see that this is a file which has one user on each row. So we have a header row saying name, login, department, so on and so forth. Then we have a name, Lucas Hanson, a login, which is Luha, a department, which is R&D. And maybe the department here would be something that we use to position the users in different organizational units or assign them to different groups, I don't know. And then we have a more proper IP address. And then we have some description. So Lucas here is a department manager. And we also have an object class that we don't need to care about. So how do we get this inf information into PowerShell? Well, the simplest way is to use the import CSV function. So we can actually import a, a CSV file and store it to a variable. So the way we will do it is simply to specify a variable and then use import CSV uh, dash path and specify where the CSV file is located and then specify the delimiter. The delimiter in this case is how the values in the file is separated. So if I open the file again, you can see here that between the values there are semicolons and that is something that we have to specify with import CSV. I think that it uh, expects it to be comma separated by default. So if you have a file that is separated by comma, I don't think that you have to use the del delimiter, but you might as well start using it just to always be sure. Uh, so what happens when we run this? Uh, I'm just going to sh show you that if I run this, I will import the CSV file into PowerShell and I'm going to show you how PowerShell treats it. So if I just use uh, $users now and pipe that to format table, you don't need to care about the syntax. I'm just doing this to show you. Uh, this down here is how PowerShell sees this, this data. So it's basically a bunch of tables. So we have a table of names, logins, departments, and so on and so forth. And we can even access just one single one of those tables by supplying users dot the table that we want to have. So if we just want to output the names, we'd go $users.name and then we can hit run. Uh, make sure that you have the correct casing because this is case sensitive. So if I would go just lowercase name, I think that it wouldn't work. Okay, it's not case sensitive. How nice. Um, so that's it. Now we can have a nice table in PowerShell with our users. So how can we leverage that? Well, we can use what is called the for each loop to loop through every entry in this table. So if you look at the table again, you can see that every user has a single row. So what we want to do programmatically is to go through this table and first add a user Lucas, then add the an user and then add the Christian user. So the way that we would do this is by using a for each loop. A for each loop basically says go through everything in this uh, in this variable here. Um, and the syntax is for each, and then we have to specify a variable for, uh, for each row. So for each user in users. Uh, and what happens here is that it will iterate over the entries here. So the, uh, and user will take the value of the current, uh, of the current iteration. So for the first iteration, user will contain the data for Lucas. The second iteration, it will contain the data for Anne, and so on and so forth. So if I just try to show you this, uh, I made a small uh, for each loop here that will tell us which iteration we're in and what user we're working on. So yes, real quickly, we will run that. And as you can see here for iteration one, we're on Lucas, iteration two, we're on Anne, and so on and so forth. And we can leverage this. We can, of course, select to do uh, to take out other variables. So instead of taking name, we can also take out uh, the description, for instance. If I run this again, you will see that we will get more information. So iteration one, we have Lucas Hanson, who is a department manager. We can apply user dot email, and we will get that information as well, and so on and so forth. Now we're just printing out stuff, but we are more interested in adding users, right? So if we just forget about that, and we instead use for each user and users again, but now instead of just printing out stuff, we're using the new AD user. So in this case, uh, we have some account name, and if we remember from the last script, 
Sam account name is our logon name. So for Sam account, instead of writing something specific, we use the variable user.login, which will contain the login of the current user. Likewise, we do dash name, user.name, user principal name, user.email. And then I've also specified the path. I'm still working with the same path as before, so I'm going to dump all the users in there. And then finally, we have the account password that will, of course, be the same for every users. And we have enabled true. So this would add those three users as fully working users. So let's try to just run this piece of code and we'll see what happens. No error message, mess messages back in our Active Directory. We can refresh. And there they are. So now how would we go about structure those using nested groups? Well, if we look at the data again, we can see that in the department section here, number three, one, two, three, uh, Lucas should be R&D, Anne should be HR, and Christian should be sales. And it's likely that those groups will have different shared folders and different permissions and such. So one way would, of course, be to create a, a bunch of different organizational units, like R&D, and then Sales, and then you would ideally, of course, do this before you do the script and just add them as they should. And you would add the users to their appropriate organizational unit by just drag and drop. So we're not going to do this right now. And um, we're going to do the nested group things instead. So what we will do here is create a group for each and every role that you can have in the company. So we'll do a new organizational unit and we will call it groups. We can call them role groups because we're going to make another one in a little while. Role groups. And here I will create a bunch of new groups. So what groups did I have? We had R&D. Right click again. New group sales. Okay, let's do that. Uh, and so now we specified all the roles that are in this organization and then I can just go back into the users, mark the group users that should be one of the group. I know I'm doing it wrong now, but whatever. So I'm marking a bunch of users. I'm taking add to group, R&D, taking the groups that should, the users that should be in sales, sales, and it's done. So now I have assigned roles to the different users. So what happens if Luke, if I have this environment, it works for a couple of years, but all of a sudden Lucas here is moving from R&D to sales. When I double click, click him, I go to member off, I go to R&D, I remove that because he's no longer R&D, and instead I add him to sales. And the idea here is that he will instantly get all the permission that applies to a user in sales. Um, these groups are never going to be used to set actual permissions. So what we'll do next is that we cr will create another organizational units that we call rule groups. Rule groups. And if I want to make a rule, like permissions to a shared folder, I will add a new group here that says something like, uh, perhaps this is a group that for users that should have uh, read-write access to a shared folder. So it's for a share that is called, uh, I don't know, uh, common, and it will contain group, 10 groups that has full permissions, read, write, execute. So what I will do now is that I will use this to set permissions, and then I will just add the groups that should have that permission. So members and maybe R&D and sales should have permissions to this. But then it happens that someone in the R&D is destroying something, so I'll remove R&D and thus remove the permission for all the, for all the groups. We will look more into this with nested groups in a later demonstration. So that is it for looking briefly into how you can populate your Active Directory and structure it in a nice way. And when we get back next time, I think we're going to look at file system permissions and shared folders. So thank you for this and goodbye.